Thank you very much uh, uh, to the board and to the members of the institute and to Brendan and uh, Professors Gus and Mackenzie for sharing their name uh, with me and humbling me with this award. It's really a great honour to be um, given this award and named after two really uh, nationally and internationally recognised researchers. I uh, will give a really short overview of, I guess, why uh, the institutes felt that I'm worthy of this this year. But like uh, I think Megan mentioned, I'm really presenting what our group has done, and no more so than in clinical research, I think, than anywhere else. Uh, one person can't do um, anywhere near um, the amount of work uh, that a team can do. My, work, my research mainly is focusing on can we aim to eliminate hepatitis C in Australia? And of course, if we can do it here, we can then take our lessons overseas. Uh, hepatitis C is a major problem worldwide. And the global estimates are that between 70 million and 130 million people are living with hepatitis C. And in Australia, we have more than 200,000 people who live with chronic hepatitis C. We're a relatively low burden country on global scales, but it dispro uh, disproportionately affects very uh, vulnerable communities such as people who inject drugs, people who've been in prison, and to some extent people who live with HIV infection, particularly gay and bisexual men as well. Uh, and so the deaths from hepatitis C are now exceeding hepatitis B globally, and hepatitis C is the leading reason why people have liver transplants in Australia. So deaths from hepatitis C are from chronic liver failure, uh, cirrhosis, and also that can lead to hepatocellular cancer, uh, carcinoma as well. So if we can treat people and cure them, we can avoid a huge amount of these deaths. Uh, and that's really what the goal of uh, a lot of my research is involved with, is can we implement some of the new changes in uh, treatments to try and avoid some of these deaths downstream. If we think about what it's going to take to eliminate hepatitis C, like with many other infectious diseases, we need to make sure people are tested uh, and diagnosed so they know they have the disease because these are silent infections a lot of the time for most people. We need to give them treatment, uh, and I'll come back to that. We need harm reduction strategies because, of, co of course, preventing infection in the first place is better and in almost all cases cheaper. And one of the most important things will be a hepatitis C vaccine. Uh, hopefully soon, but one day we need to get there because if we really want to eradicate hep C so there's no ongoing new infections, vaccines are critical. This has been proven with the only disease, smallpox, we've managed to eradicate globally. But the reason why I'm uh, really excited about this space is that the treatment has been the radical change in the last three years. When I started my PhD at the Burnet in 2011, um, we could cure half of the people with hep C when they got treated, and it was a long, prolonged course of treatment. And by the time I submitted in 2014, we were talking about new drugs where almost everybody got cured. One of the examiners uh, delightfully said, I choose to take this PhD in the spirit in which it was started, even though some of the results are anachronistic. And that was three years ago. And we've moved on. We now have in Australia the effective treatments which cure most people who take the pills. We now have access to treatments because we have them funded. So that essentially in Australia you can get free tests and free treatment on PBS. And in Australia we're quite open about treating people who are at risk. So treating people who inject drugs is, has been standard here for a long time, but in countries overseas this just doesn't happen and prisoners don't get treated overseas either. Uh, and we also have to think about cost-effective allocation of resources. So the, global, uh, the World Health Organization has, has come out with really um, ambitious targets to try and eliminate hep C, so that by 2030 we will be down to about 80% of the number of new infections in hep C and 90% reduction in hepatitis B infections, and at the same time be avoiding two-thirds of the deaths that were happening, happening in 2015. We've got a long way to go. In Australia, this is, um, these are the numbers of people over the last uh, three years, uh, data from the end of last year, so that the number of people living with hep C has been uh, reasonably stable, above 200,000, 80% or so are diagnosed, but there's this big drop-off between those who've ever received treatment. Most people have never been treated. And the people who've been cured was about half of those who were treated until recently. So that's the work we have to do. We have to get those columns on the right to match almost all the people on the left. So everyone who has been infected has had access to treatment, which will be curative. 
Now, work we've done here, um, particularly Nick Scott uh, has led this work in, within our group, is to really try and work out what it would take in Australia to achieve these elimination targets. To reduce uh, new infections by 80% by 2030, we need to target people who are actually actively transmitting infection and they're people who inject drugs. They could be prison people living in prison, as, uh, people who are incarcerated as well. Um, if we don't target treatments that way and we just use them, uh, use therapies to try and prevent uh, the mortality and morbidity, which is critically important, if we only target treatments at people with, with bad liver disease, then the incidence line doesn't change at all. Uh, that's the, the, the flat line from, uh, that you can see across the top there. But if we manage to target treatments to those people who are injecting drugs, then we'll see this nice fall over about 15 years. Down the bottom there. So that's the, that's the goal, and the numbers we need to treat in Australia are nearly 5,000 people per year, which are certainly achievable with our health system. So I'll just quickly mention a couple of key projects which we're working on here at Burnett in the viral hepatitis group to really implement these new re uh, revolutionary drugs. The first is the hepatitis C treatment and prevention study. We're aiming to see if we can change the way hepatitis C uh, is being tr uh, considered as not just a specialist hospital-based uh, need of treatment, but can we get nurses to deliver treatment to people in the community where they are living and remove a whole lot of barriers between getting from street-based drug markets all the way through to diagnosis and treatment at a hospital. Uh, and we also at the same time want to see whether treating people can prevent their people that they actually share and inject drugs with, prevent them from catching hep C and prevent themselves being reinfected. Because this is an ongoing problem. If you don't treat people as a community in which they live and just treat them as individuals, then getting reinfected or passing on infection is important. And this applies to lots of infectious diseases. So we're aiming to, we're doing this already and we've screened more than 300 people and started treatment on more than 100 based out in the community through mobile vans where our nurses work tirelessly to get people in, offer them tests and to basically do more than 95% of the care of these patients by themselves. It's rare for these people to need to come in and see a doctor. And this will be revolutionary if we can show that this works in terms of having similar cure rates and even better if it trans, uh, translates into blocking infection transmission. Similarly, we're looking at general practice-based care compared with hospitals. Whilst in Australia, GPs can now prescribe and, and provide these very expensive drugs, which is really revolutionary, many countries worldwide don't do this. 94% of all hep C prescriptions worldwide are from specialists in specialist centres. So that's a huge barrier for people to get to care. So we started this randomised trial to show, to, to, expl to, to explore whether treating people when they walk in the door to the GP and get tested, rather than referring them up to the hospital, will in fact uh, improve treatment uptake and cure. Less than a third of people used to get from the door of the GP to the hospital and get onto treatment. And now through this study where we've got 100 people who've started the study already, we can see that two thirds of them are now getting onto treatment. And whilst in Australia we already have access at the general practice level, the message here will be critically important for the rest of our region where general practitioners largely can't prescribe hep C treatment. And the last bit of implementation science I think I'd like to mention is this population-based approach we're taking now to really enhance care and treatment and aiming to eliminate hep C both within uh, the HIV co-infected community, which is about 500, only 500 people in Victoria probably live with hep C HIV infection. We're aiming there within the first two years of all this treatment access to get everybody tested and treated if we can. More than 80% of those people are in contact with our hospitals that we, we're, we're affiliated here with Burnett, like the Alfred, Royal Melbourne, and some very key uh, general practices in the area. Uh, and so it should be in, uh, possible to treat those people. Half of, half of the people living with HIV Hep C in our cohort here have already been treated in the first 12 months. And of course, if we can do that, we should have a big impact on transmission within that population. The Eliminate C partnership is starting now, and this is a much broader program involving the state government, the Department of Justice and Health, also Gilead Sciences, uh, and the key uh, community organisations we work with to try and replicate this in people who inject drugs. There are about 25,000 people uh, who inject drugs living with hep C. We need to try and deliver treatment to about 10% of them every year, as we showed you in that model, as I showed you earlier, to see if we can eliminate hep C over the next decade. And so this is really the pathway that people follow so that we can task substitute, don't need doctors to do this, we can have peers providing testing or nurses 
they can have assessment in the community, they can have all of the blood tests, the scans that are done in mobile settings, and then treatment can be provided outside the hospital. Why is this important? As everyone's mentioned today already, we need to find cost-effective and practical solutions to this problem because the model of care for providing hep C treatment till now has been very expensive and has stopped people getting cured. So I think the, it, the future is exciting. Lots of people have said that. The Prime Minister's been saying that for 12 months as well. In hepatitis C, we've got some key challenges ahead. Uh, if, we can, if we can, even taking all the things I've already mentioned, if we can show that they all work, we're still going to have challenges around implementing diagnostics in the community. Um, will rapid testing actually improve uh, diagnosis and links to care? Can we then implement that? Will people want to go through these new testing pathways? What will happen when people are cured? Will reinfection come along and perhaps undermine some of our public health strategies? We need to ask and answer that question now. And we also need to think, can we sustain this? Because whilst there's a lot of enthusiasm and a quarter of people living with hep C have probably started treatment in the last year, this is not necessarily going to be sustained long term. And we've seen this with infectious diseases after an infectious disease, whether it's a sexually transmitted disease or not, that whilst there can be enthusiasm to treat people and get cured, if we don't sustain that, then some of these epidemics do come back. And that's why vaccines are going to be critically important when we get there as well. So I think there's a lot of work to be done. I'm optimistic that we can get there, but I think that this is not the end of hepatitis C. It might just be the beginning of the end. And I want to acknowledge uh, my, uh, definitely my uh, mentors, Margaret Hallard and Alex Thompson primarily, and also Alfred Health, Monash University and Burnett who employ me, and our funders mainly through um, NHMRC and some key industry partners. And as I mentioned, this is very much a team effort. There's several key postdocs who are working on these studies with me, and uh, the field work and nursing staff work tirelessly, uh, both at Burnett and Alfred, to deliver these programs. Thanks again for this prestigious award.